And welcome everyone to a Big Ten Network chat. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Penn State's Lamar Stevens, well, formerly of Penn State. And uh, Lamar, we are in unprecedented times. Um, since the murder of George Floyd, we've seen uh, protests, rallies across the country, across the globe, uh, on college campuses, in cities, small, large. Um, and, and this just feels different. You spoke out uh, in State College at one of those. Uh, and I know you've got some feelings about where we are as a country and where we need to be. In terms of just raw emotion, what are you feeling right now? Um, I think the best way to sum it up is really, you know, just pain. You know, I can't believe, you know, we've been going, you know, through this cycle for so long um, and that everybody still isn't viewed as equal, as just, as just normal people. And I think what bothers me the most about everything that's going on, you know, in terms of George Floyd and Amar and Ahmaud Arbery, um, those could have been, you know, my best friends. It could have been my dad. It could have been my brother. Um, and, you know, that's the scary thing. And I think that's why I really feel that pain because, you know, these are guys that, you know, they're just, they're, they're, they were judged by the color of their skin and treated differently by the color of, of their skin. And, you know, I have people that I care about that have the same, color, the same skin color. And I think it kind of just that fear um, of something happening to me or somebody I love. And um, I think, you know, the, I think that's the biggest thing that I feel. But I feel like the country has also done a really good job in the past week or so. It's just having people speak out and, you know, have their voices heard. And, and I think that's the best thing you can do is just start a conversation right now. So, look, I can't walk in your shoes. Uh, I don't know what it's like, you know, to be driving along and maybe you get a speeding ticket, and if the police officer pulls me over and pulls you over, potentially he may treat us differently. And, and that's just right. a fact of what we live in in this country. Mm -hmm. In your past, in your experiences, because I spoke to, you know, Kevin Warren, the Big Ten commissioner, about this, that he worries all the time. He's got, you know, teenage children, one that plays at Mississippi State, and just worries all the time when they're out and about just living life, um, not that they're right. doing anything wrong. Um, have there been things in your past where you have been concerned uh, just by living your life and where you've been? Um, even since a young kid, my mom has always, both of my parents, my mom and my dad have both had those conversations about, you know, how to interact with, you know, police, how, you know, the proper things to do and to have, show your hands and don't do any, you know, quick movements and, use your, you know, use your manners, be polite, um, you know, and I have been blessed to not have any, you know, poor encounters with any police officers, but, you know, my mom has taught me from the, from day one, you know, when I started to drive, and this is how, you know, you conduct yourself when you deal with police, and, you know, we talked about it for about an hour, and she hit on a, a lot of different points that she wanted me to hit every time I get pulled over, or every time I have an interaction, so I think, it's definitely scary, you know, just like Mr. Warren said, like, my mom fears every time me and my brother, you know, leave the house, you know, she gives us a hug and says a prayer every time we leave. And, you know, she's just praying over us and hopes that God is looking over us and that nothing, you know, will happen to us. And I think that's just not fair for any mom or any person to have that fear when these people are supposed to be protecting us and we're supposed to feel safe when they come. We're not supposed to be scared when you know the police are called or when you have an interaction with the police so i think it's just you know it's time for change what was life like for you um at penn state uh as a black student athlete uh penn state honestly is is it's been great to me um you know the interactions that i've had that may have been poor and there was a one time where I was called the N word. It was um, it was off campus and, and like and at the outside of the city of State College um, when I was young, I was like a freshman. But other than that, I had I haven't had any bad experiences with you know anybody in State College. But my thing is, I want to make sure that the people who love me when they see me with that number eleven uniform and wearing that Penn State uniform love me when I'm having a conversation with you about making the world place and social and just sure that, you know, the love is real and like you love me for who I really am, a black young man, black young student athlete. So look, this definitely feels different. 
Um, I mean, we've had, you know, systemic racism for 400 years, you know, on this land. And um, there have been, you know, incidents of police brutality uh, for decades, hundreds of years. But I don't know, I just, this feels different. Why do you think the yeah. movement that has now happened after George Floyd's murder feels different? I think it feels different because I think you're starting to see, you know, a, 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 this country really come together uh, for the most part and really be fed up with it. And I think people are really fed up. And not only is it people coming out and protesting, but people, you know, you're exposing your friend that is not really a part of this um, movement of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think, you know, that's the biggest thing. Call, people are calling out people that are close to them. And even, you know, with Drew Brees and his comment, I, you know, his number one wide receiver called him out. Michael Thomas called him out. And I think that's kind of where we are. And it's like silence isn't an option. And being, you know, just in the middle and quiet really isn't an option for anybody anymore, um, especially for, you know, being a black man. Like, it's just not an option. If I can't feel that, you know, you're supporting me and you have my back and you care about my life, then like we just can't be friends or we can't communicate. And I feel like that's kind of just where the country is right now. And I think that's why it feels so different. I think we're trying to kind of make those people that are quiet or the racist, I think we're trying to make them the minority and make everybody else, you know, the majority. And I think that's why it's so different because, you know, there's no barriers. And I think everybody just wants equality from, you know, everybody and people are calling each other out. Lamar, your college basketball career, your college life is over. Uh, hopefully you'll be in the NBA here next season, and we wish you all the best in that. But on the college campuses, um, change is going to have to happen. The NABC put out sort of action steps that they hope that their coaches will take on next season uh, that include meeting with law enforcement, um, empowering their student athletes to speak up social justice, having speakers come, sharing experiences among, you know, the diverse locker room that exists on these various campuses taking election day off and ensuring that your student athletes uh you know register to vote especially if they have to vote absentee in advance but acknowledging that it's important to vote what do you hope you see at penn state in the big 10 going forward on college campuses especially with college basketball players and student athletes and students where we can make this a better place and empower student athletes and students going forward I think the best thing um, that Penn State and Coach Chambers has done in my four years, each year we met with the head police chief. And I think just starting that conversation right there and kind of just bringing them in and having open dialogue is something that will be really beneficial. And I know that was beneficial for me and it made me more comfortable, you know, being able to, you know, uh, maybe approach an officer or if, or if an officer approached me or if I was in the same vicinity. Um, and I think that was something huge uh, Coach Chambers d uh, did. And I hope that, you know, it gets spread out throughout the country and, and all schools start doing that because, you know, just being, you know, a black man or, you know, you never know anybody's background or where they come from or how they view police. So I feel like, you know, the, the best thing we can do in terms of situation, you know, across the board is just start a dialogue and start having those conversations. And, you know, I've been blessed to, you know, have, you know, guys that I looked up to black men that have been in my shoes that played in college, like Kevin Freeman, that's on the staff right now. And, you know, he was able to shed light, you know, to everybody, our coaches, the team, you know, anybody, managers. And I think, you know, just that those conversations are the best thing that we can do right now. Yeah, I think you made a great point. They can cheer number 11 uh, for four years, uh, but when your career is over or even while you're playing, when you're just living your life on the street, they better cheer you as well and treat you uh, equally and make sure that you have, um, you know, all the rights that every other individual has in this country. Um, Lamar, I appreciate it. I love your, in, you're incredibly insightful. I hope this is informative for those watching here on BTN. Uh, and more than anything, I just wish you stay safe and best of luck to you, Lamar. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.